Because if something happened to you, you get hurt on that job, who gonna take care of y'all? You know, you gotta you gotta think smart at the end of the day. Because I've seen people get hurt offshore. I've seen people get hurt in in driving accidents, any any type of accident, and they don't have no backup. Yeah, so they, they got to worry about, oh, am I going to get approved for my short-term disability? Am I going to get approved for my long-term disability? Am I going to be able to pay all these doctor bills and this and that? And sometimes when you, you have to go through all that stuff, that insurance don't kick in me immediately. Nope. So you better have some saved up. Because if that stuff don't kick in immediately, you're going to be sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting. And, and then if you try to file a lawsuit, pff, it's you, over. You about to wait even longer. So don't even worry about going back to that job. <laughs> it might take years. I'm an experienced man. I, I it was a point to where when I had to get my gallbladder, like not having health insurance or things like that. When you come off your job, if you don't have anything in place to help carry, like an accidental policy or some disability insurance or something like that, especially you business owner, because with business owners, if you don't grind, if you don't show up to work and you don't have a team that can show up when you are sick, then you gotta be the, be there. And if you're not there, your money stops. Yep. So if your money stops, you need some kind of financial structure in place so that if you do need to take a break and you do have to go get surgery or you do get hurt, you got something coming in that can help pay what you need to get paid and it's not like you starting all over because I ain't gonna lie I, I had to do that so coming from that experience and knowing that hey not having these things in place when you in it some people may say oh that's stupid why wouldn't you have it uh, in some instances you're in the beginning of, of entrepreneurship you're not when that's all you got you're you're learning Oh, so yeah. in the process of you learning what you got to do, what you need to do, you going to run into things like that. I'm going to run into problems. That's like financially, like, man, I had, especially taxes, dog. I had a lady, man, my first, first two years of me being an owner operator, I had this lady, friend, did our taxes, dog. First year, came back, I owed $20,000. I said, what? I, know. I, know. I said, what? So I'm telling my wife, she was like, what's going on? I'm like, man, I don't know. I'm like, I know this ain't right. So, you know, I'm like, all right, we Hello. go to the IRS. Hello, Brian, I'm <laughs> Uncle Sam. I we, come to take my money. We go back again. The second year, another 20000 So now I'm $40,000 in debt to the IRS, and I don't know why. I've got all my... Uh, write-offs, I got all the things, my expenses, all of that turned in. So I go to another tax preparer and they go analyze what they put the uh, what they list you as in the taxes. Mm -hmm. The lady had me down as a truck manufacturer. Oh lord. I'm so, like, yeah, and that's another thing y'all. I'm, 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 I'm not being uh, trying to be funny or crack jokes. If you go file my taxes, I don't want nobody to file my taxes that can't add, multiply, subtract, and divide. I, I, I'm not trying to be funny. You need to have some type of degree. I'm being serious. I see so many people that file taxes, they ain't even graduated high school. I don't need you playing with my taxes and having me on Uncle Sam. I had somebody file my taxes, did me the same way, had me on over $20,000. And I had no way to prove that you know that they that, that they messed up my taxes. So I actually just paid Uncle Sam off probably like three years ago. Man, it, and, and, it, and it's ridiculous because there's no way I can prove it. The way they helped me, the lady I went to, they they when they went in went back and she found out it was the the tax. Uh, I don't know what it's called, but they label it as what industry you're in and what you do. Mm -hmm. It's a number. So with that number. She had to go in and change it. When she went in and changed it, she went back those two years. And I broke even. Yeah. So it's like, when you don't know, you don't know. So that's why we're here. Because a lot of people act like they know everything. They act like they know, oh yeah, I know this and I know that. But I had a, I had the biggest problem I used to have back in the day. 
when I was uh when I first got out of high school, I used to live in Birmingham. And um I was looking for a job because I was working at Cracker Bear and I was like, man, this ain't gonna cut it. So I was driving around UAB Hospital. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for the uh, HR office where you go apply or find out where you can put application in. So I'm asking these people in scrubs or they they got name tags for the hospital. I'm like, hey, where's the HR office? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you work here. <laughs> you work here. I'm like, but you don't know what an HR office is? So it's like when I say just because somebody look like they know or they got direction of they think they know sometimes they you don't it's things you don't know don't mean and nothing. you gotta understand that that's what you that's where growth come from it don't mean nothing because they got on the uniform because <laughs> that's where growth and i had to learn i was like man just because everybody say they do what they do they may do the action but they don't understand the structure of what they do oh i'm just doing it because i know i'm gonna get paid i'm gonna get a lot of money you're not gonna get a lot of money and mess my taxes you, know? and you get a lot of people that shut down to do that, and then they you don't hear from them no more. Yeah, I talked to plenty of people like, man, that that person right there, man, I, I can't even get in contact with them no more. They yeah. gone. I didn't heard of people doing people taxes closed down and ran off with the people money, which is sad. It's ridiculous, and you get hurt over stuff like that. You, oh, I, yeah, I wouldn't want to be playing with somebody's uh, you know, money like that to uh, file their taxes and close down and don't don't give the people their returns back. That's that's horrible. And the high times all the day, people Man, are you killing get killed over them. anything. So I'm not saying y'all go kill somebody, but that's you get hurt over something like this. That's that's nothing to play with. So please understand, whenever you go, whoever you go to, I don't care if it don't have to be a tax person. It could be an accountant. It could be a real estate investor or a realtor or insurance person. Whoever it is, do some kind of due diligence before you go in so you can kind of know something about what you're trying to do so that when they get to talking to you you can understand that <laughs> you can understand <laughs> you can understand something about what's going on yeah because that's where i think a lot of times we miss it even though we know we got you got people that got that make a lot of money every year but they they are exhausted, mm -hmm. and I was listening to a uh, I was listening to another podcast, and they were saying th us uh, that I forgot the percentage of millionaires are living check to check, and they're multimillionaires. I can believe it. And it's like because they have so much involved that expense that they cannot stop. Yeah, because I I I filed my taxes last year. It's told me I owe thirty three thousand in taxes. I was like, how? <laughs> taxes coming out my check every pay period. <laughs> I was like, that's good sad. lord. <laughs> that's sad. I was like, that's that, that's somebody's salary thirty three thousand in taxes. I was like, good grief. But at okay. the end of the day, the financial literacy you need to have. We need to learn and pay attention to see what people got going on because you just don't want know anybody fooling with your finances. Yeah. Your finances will take you places that nothing else will. You know, you got to know the means, the where and the wants of what's going on and invest your, invest your money wisely. You know, you can't stress it enough. You know, everybody wants to do this and do that. You invest in what you want to, but have knowledge and common sense of what you're investing in. Just don't go invest in something you just worry about money. Yeah. You need to know what you're dealing with because if you don't know what you're dealing with, you get pissed off and you don't get your money. You want to fight. You're going to be upset at that person. But you should have studied and strategized on what's going on when you put that money into that option you're choosing. Yeah. Anytime, anytime you invest something, it's an option. Nobody making you do it. It's an option. It's just like trading stocks. They're called options. It's either your ass going to put up money on this or, or you're not. not. <laughs> Plain and simple. Yeah. So don't go investing in something and you get mad at the person in... You know, you're like, where my money at? That's all you worry about. You worry about freaking money, but you don't know what's going on or what's driving that force for you to get your money. How's your money being made? How's your money going to get paid? What's driving you to get this income? Learn the steps 
or what you invest in before you get pissed off at the person you invested with or you invested in because at the end of the day it's your fault for not paying attention or reading of what's going on especially a job too in, anything because it's like it's a lot of people man and I've experienced that you get told one thing in the interview and then when you get out of the interview and they hire you it ain't what they said they didn't it, 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 I just I didn't have that too well you know uh <laughs> Oh, things changed um, the last couple of weeks. Home office sent some uh, memos down, and uh, we had to make some changes. So you're going to be doing this now. Okay, so Mr. Brookings, uh, it, was a, it was a change in your job, and it looked like the structure is going to – you're, you're, you're going to be making the same pay, but you're going to have to do this, 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 that. But on this paper, you told me I was only going to be working this. But if I would have lied on my application and said I didn't have this, would you have hired me? But you just flipped this on me. Pull up. Go <laughs> okay? You wouldn't even heard me. But you can – just because you hired me and you knew – and I'm going to be honest. I honestly know – with some companies, when they do that, they know what they're doing before they hire you. If y'all like to go fishing, that's what they're doing. So they're they going to be like, okay, we're going to get all these people Reel in. Reel them on in, boys. When we Reel get them, them in. in. <laughs> when we get them in, we need these many people for this, this many people for this position, and this many people for this position. So we're going to put this out. And then they tell you, okay, well, you did, you're you going to be doing this, 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 and this. And in your mind, you're like, okay. But when you get there, you're doing that, 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 that. That's that, why they're paying you that $30 an hour. You thought you were going to sit at the computer for $30 an hour? Uh, no. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Not even get a chance to see what it was. And then, but then, see, that's a, that's a crazy thing as far as knowing, like, okay, you know you get paid 30 an hour. You know what your bills are. And a lot of times, just coming and learning we know if I got there, okay, this is going to pay for this, but I'm going to go do this because you have an emotional tie to something. And a lot of times that's, that's where either social media get people out of whack. Um, they, people, neighbors, people, co-workers, friends, they get out of whack. Some friend go get a new car. Next thing you know, everybody in the group done went and got a new car knowing you can't afford it. Or somebody go buy a house. Now the next thing you know, Everybody going to go buy a house, but you, that person may be ready. Trying to keep up with the Joneses. <laughs> and, you, and you you don't know. And I'm not saying that you can't be ready, but I'm going to be honest. I've learned, I, I bought my first house at 26 years old. And one thing about buying a house, maintenance. If you, at that time, that was back in 2009. Nine or ten. For us to, this is just what I remember. Us to replace our roof then was five grand. We had to replace the roof. We had to play replace the AC unit, and not just the unit outside. The lines that cost us about four or five. Preach on, brother. Then we had plumbing issues. Good God. And I tried to do that myself by going to Home Depot and running a snake down the thing and trying to do it. But eventually, the piping was old, so the roots growing into the pipe. So they had to come and dig up, cut out, replace. That's still money. And if you got a, a nice home, nice ride, and it's already hard for you to to do that and you can't and if a roof go out a leak in the house and you can't fix it yourself and you gotta pay somebody to come fix it you're gonna be mad then you're gonna put yourself in you're gonna do one of two things you either gonna go find somebody that's gonna do it for cheap and then they're gonna mess it up in the long run or two you're gonna go put yourself and get some credit from somewhere that's gonna overextend your finances more than you really want it to. And I'm just like, man, learning that if you cannot maintain the home, and I know people, well, they got warranty that, man, look, don't, don't cover, cover no everything, room. Just like everything with your health insurance, it don't cover everything. everything. It don't cover the BBLs. <laughs> it don't recover the nose jobs. It don't recover the lips. 
all that stuff. It don't cover everything. It don't cover everything. So trust and believe you need to have a backup plan. Anything yes. you do, a backup plan, a strategic plan. Because then you got not even just, okay. If you got electrical problems in a home and you don't know where it's coming from, just for them to come look, that ain't cheap. Well, and then you just got paid. You just paid your car note. You just paid your house note. I get you want to live good. And I get think everybody wants to say, well, stuff is high. Yes, it is. But at the same time, if it being high, you have to understand that if you get your, out of your emotions and when you look at what you got going in and coming out, you can find some things. Because I'm going to tell you right now, our church is, uh, we're doing a 30-day financial fast. And it's like every day there's, we got this book called Kingdom Wealth. Shout out to Pastor V. Shout out Pastor V. How you doing there, brother? Um, it's called Kingdom Wealth. And um, with Kingdom Wealth, it, he has 30 days of finances. You spend one day on that particular finance, uh, learning and meditating where he put scripture with finances and things like that. And it has a, a plan where you write out all your bills, See what your in and your out is. And a lot of people don't do that because I'm learning that when you sit down with somebody and you're talking to them and they're like, okay, I wanna I wanna get this business loan. And you're like, okay, but I don't have business credit, okay. They have to look at your personal credit. And then they have to look at your finances and they have to look at what you have expenses. So you can't get mad at the people because they won't give you something that you need. Exactly. So pay attention to what y'all doing. Just just this is just us talking because a lot of this from experience to people yeah. that don't know. So at the end of the day, Know when to fold and know when to don't go and jump because everybody else is jumping. Don't do it. But y'all, we got this big interview coming up with Mr. Allen, Big Swazo himself. <laughs> He's going to break it down to y'all and tell you how he got started in the offshore transportation industry. And we'll show this interview tonight. Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is your boy JB. I'm doing a live interview right here, right now. Uh, with Mr. Allen. Allen, man, we sitting down here, me and Brian, we appreciate you coming on to the show on Talk To Me Driver. You reached out to me. Let's go tell everybody, you know, all the people that want to know about what transpired in the transportation industry. Just let these people know how you got started and where you came from and how you how you making it now, how you living. Oh, man, how y'all doing, man? My name is Allen, man. Uh, I work for Jackson on Shore. And uh, really, uh, I started back in, uh, 98, man, I started uh, as OS, and uh, I did my thing. Before I was working offshore, I was working in the shipyard. I was a welder. So right there, that's where everything started, as a welder. Then I transferred to the water, started working in the water. And uh, so I, I don't mean to break you off, Alan. So you started as, as a welder. As a welder. OK. And how did you, how did you cross over to know, like, hey, I want to go to the to the water to the water to the offshore world. Well, I had some friends that were working here before, and every time they came home, like man, you need to get that sea car, man. Come on, they're working in the water. You built the boats, why don't you just go work in the boats? So okay. Like, you know what, man? I got my act together one day in the shipyard. Like you know what? I went right there to New Orleans, applied for my sea car, and that was history. I got you. Okay, okay. I've been here since, since 1998. 1998. Whoo! That was a long time ago, my boy. Whew, long I, time, man. I, think I was in the fourth, fifth grade. Come on, man. <laughs> fourth to fifth grade. Okay, okay. Yes, so sir. since you've been in the transportation industry, mm -hmm. what what people, we, we were trying to get people to know the ins and outs. Did you, you know, start at the bottom? 
Yes, Did, what, would you get, would you hand it something? No, I earned mine. Okay, exactly. I earned it. I earned it. You heard him? I he earned it. earned it. Okay. I earned it. Three years. Three. I, I waited three years. I said, oh, yes. It was my fault. I could have got it before that, but I'm glad I did because once I got my, my AB to the next level, I went to unlimited. I had the seat time, so I earned my spot. Okay. Yeah. Don't. It was, back, it was hard back in the day because, hey, I ain't gonna lie, nobody wanted to sign my book. But shout out to Captain Nelson. I don't know where you at, Captain Nelson. He helped me, man, and got me signed on, and that's why I'm at right now, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's good. Yes, sir. But back to the topic, man, uh, to the new guys nine days, man. I got a lot of a lot of family members, friends. Hey man, how can I get all shit? Yeah, I got family members that come to me, man, friends, and they be like, man, hell, man, uh, man, how can I get on shoot, man? Uh, I got my tweet card. And I be telling them, man, it's more than just getting a tweet card nowadays, man. If you want to make some money, you want to move up in the ladder, yeah, you can get a tweet card and go work in the crew boats, but you're only going to make probably like, what, $100 a day, maybe, 130 the most, 40 but, at that uh, point, you might well, well stay at home and work. If, you might well stay at home and work at Walmart or but, FedEx or something like that, you know? But you got to, what, invest in yourself and get the experience furthermore. Right. And, and I don't knock, I, don't, I, I ain't knocking them for going to the crew boats, man. You can go on the crew boats, and I, like I tell them, to get started, get your, your feet wet. And then, don't stand there and try to move up to the big boats. That way you can get your, your AB or become a maid or captain. You want to. So... You know, that's why I be trying to tell the youngsters nowadays, you know. So being out here in the uh, industry, I'm pretty sure you done faced uh, a lot of adversity as far as, you know, getting promoted or, you know, transitioning with different crews. Because, you know, I know being offshore myself almost eight years, the crews don't always stay the same. You might get lucky and find a crew that have been there five plus years or more, but... Together, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's always swapping here, man. Um, especially uh, different companies, you know. Um, you see guys coming in and in and out, you know. Some of them they probably move, go to the drilling ships, or go somewhere else, go overseas. So you know, we don't stay. The crew don't stay together like talking about that day. It's, it's weird to see a crew that been together for like two, three years. The whole crew. You go, you had three or four that left. Like, man, now we got a new guy, now another guy like that. So. Gotcha, gotcha. So being in this industry here, do you, is it, a lot of people say it's hard to be gone away from their old lady or be gone away from home. You know, they thinking, of, they thinking about it at home, I understand. But at the same time, if that person who you with committed to you, you should be all right. You know, okay. and did you ever face that, like, I, I, man, I can't be gone away from my girl. I can't be gone. Yeah, at first, man, at first, especially when you got kids. First, when you got kids and they're young, you know, they don't understand the work that we do. Oh, yeah. And okay. it's like, you know, I. You're missing out on that time. That time. That family you, time. First thing, right here on shore, man, you're you going to miss a lot. Holidays, birthdays, uh, anniversaries. It's a lot of holidays that we miss. But you got to have a strong woman at home, too. Oh, yeah. You're you right. got to have that strong woman that be like, you know what? He out there making a sacrifice so we can have a better life. Exactly. It's it's it's, it's sacrifices every single time. I didn't, I've been around guys told me, man, sure, my birthday, man, ain't working on my birthday. Or, man, they think I'm going to do this, man. It's a holiday. Or this. You you know what you signed up for? You know what you signed up for? There, ain't no holidays offshore, boy. Ain't no holidays offshore. We work, we work <laughs> seven days a week. Ain't no holidays. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, I can't even spell holiday. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ain't no holidays out here. No. no. I have guys ask me all the time, hey, man, I ain't know you still work offshore, man. You can get me on. I can tell you what to do. I can't get you on because yeah. you ain't feeling embarrass me because I see what you do in the streets. <laughs> Right, right, right. You ain't gonna make me look bad. <laughs> right. I, I mean, I can tell you some story, man. Uh, I'm gonna tell you one. Cousin of mine, I hooked him up with a company. I ain't gonna say the company name. 
but uh, back in the days, and uh, he went through the physical and everything. He had his Z card, he had his STCW, everything. He went back to New York the day he was supposed to show up to work and told me about it. So since, since that time, I was like, you know what? He left me like. Left your hand, cold left dry. Me, so and, I, and then people wonder why you don't want to help him out. That's right. So I had another cousin after that, a couple of years later, came at, came at me, hey man, can you help me get with your company? And I explained to him, man, look, this is what my other cousin did to me, so please, at least try, stay there, a couple of months, and you don't like it, then go, but don't just, don't show up like that other cousin did. And my other cousin, he did better, man. He it, 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 it's not even that, it makes it bad for the next person, and people think you're not trying to help them. That's the main, trajectory of this show we trying to reach and help people promote different businesses promote the company you work for you know any anybody who don't know how to get in the industry who i was one of them people that couldn't find a job what couldn't get hired this is the main reason this show trying to help people right. but if you want you seeking the wrong help and just trying to you know stand somebody up is pointless yeah yeah people putting their neck out for you you can't do that you know you got to show up, be ready, be dressed up. Don't come in there with your pants hanging off your ass, come in there ready to go. Don't come in there, ah, right, you right. got to you gotta have your mouthpiece ready to go. You got to sell right. yourself. You got to sell yourself, man, because don't be like, you know, I see some guys here that come here that you got to go knock on the door because they overslept. That happened to anybody. Your mama is at home. That's right. Say it again. Your mama is at home. At home. So wake up, man. I can see it once in a while. It happened to me every blue moon, but I made sure I put two alarms in my phone. Only reason I woke up, up late one time offshore mm -hmm. because the EGN killed my me and the uh, they swapped generators and my my power was knocked off. Right. So it killed my my phone and my battery. Right. That was the only time that happened. I always try to wake up at least an hour, two hours early because I know how I am. I need to get a cup of coffee. I need yeah. to get myself going. That's right. <laughs> My meantime time before yeah. I go to work. Exactly. I'm not waking up 10 minutes before what? go straight to the deck? Hell no. That's dumb. You're going to get somebody hurt. You're going to get somebody hurt out here. But they got a lot of guys that do that. I don't knock them. That's them. You know? I don't do that. I give I, myself an hour, two hours to wake up. A lot of these guys out here think mama out here. Mama ain't out here. Dad ain't out here. Your grandma not here. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey ain't here either. That's right. Jeffrey and Fresh Prince. <laughs> That's right. Hey, 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 look, you ain't grown out here now when you come out short. You going to be grown by the time you finish. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Nobody ain't got time out here to be grown, raising grown men. And like we know what we was talking about earlier. And I'm telling a lot of guys, man, it's a lot of things that you're going to miss at home. But when you home, man, man make the best out of it. And that's one thing I had to learn, you know. Make the best out of it. When you're home, enjoy your kids, you know, your wife, your home, you know. Home is home, work is work. Work is work, yeah. You ain't thinking about work right. and home at, at work because you got to you gotta right. focus. And I, it's a lot of guys, I'm not going to say names. Right. I done seen it in the industry. They bring home to work. Can't do that. Can't and do that. that's when the confusion starts. And then, it's a, or they bring work home. Man, while I'm home, I'm not I'm talking about nothing, nothing about this work. This boat. Exactly. And, and they got some guys that like to throw me stuff at home. Man, I, 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 I don't answer. I don't want them. Not about this boat while I'm home. Now, when you get close, a couple days to come back to work, yes. I want to know what's going on. Hey, when y'all good? All right, I'll be in a couple days. But once I get my first time, my, my first couple days at home, I don't want to know nothing about this boat. I need it right here in this boat. I know you get this the favorite question. What's that? Of all marine transportation, offshore, drill ships, I don't care. Anybody, CDL drivers, truck drivers, how long you here for? When you go back? All the time. <laughs> all the time, man. When all you got home? When you got home. Why you ain't call me? <sighs> <laughs> Why you ain't hit me up? Man, come on, man. Man, I ain't seen you in six or seven years. What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you Look, no, uh, uh, uh. The number one one. The number one. Uh -huh. When you go back. Man, man I, I just got home, <laughs> man. I just got home. Why you all acting 
be that. Sometimes I'd be like, man, come on, man. Why are you asking me that? But I, you know, I just, I just let it fly, man. I just let it fly. But uh, yeah, man, like I said, man, all short now, it changed a lot. Over the years, you know, it's a lot of paperwork nowadays you got to get. So to the newcomers, and, man. And I'm, you say that with paperwork. Would, would you recommend a college degree or a trade? Exactly. A trade. And a not knocking nobody that went to college or anything. Mm-hmm. Me, my opinion, if you go go to college, if you're trying to be a lawyer, a doctor, a nurse, a scientist, if you ain't doing none of them, get you a trade. Because if not, you're going to be dedicated to Uncle Sam and them loans. Yes. And it's not only a thing, you know, like go to college, but uh, when you're in college, do the interns, 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 you know, so you can get into your field slowly by surely, and then get your your feet wet. They got interns also now. We got a lot of guys that come from the military schools, do intern here, and once they finish, man, I saw a couple guys that came to the intern right here in my company a year ago, and I saw them working in one of our boats, I'm like, man, you here now? Like, yeah, man, I graduated a year ago. And that was interns, interns to get them in the field, you know. Gotcha, gotcha. And yeah. we about to wrap it up here, uh, Alan. We appreciate you, thank you, thank you for thank stopping you. through. Just give a word of advice to the people who are trying to get in the transportation industry, whether it be a truck driver working offshore, an uh, air pilot, or, you know, Mailman, any, any, anything, you know, what, what would you recommend in this upcoming world? How things are now versus how you got started? What would you recommend? A word of advice. Word of advice, man. You know, uh, try to learn it. Your feel. Uh, be humble. And uh, you know, just uh, don't give up, man. Don't give up. You know, follow your goals. Follow your goals and be home. That's the whole thing, man. For sure, for sure, man. Me and Brian appreciate you, man. Man, I appreciate for coming you through. Show, man. Talk to me, driver.com. Get at us, man. Appreciate you. We'll see y'all next time. Yo.